everybody. I am so happy you chose to join us again for our Mount Sinai MBC of Memphis YouTube channel. Let us pray. Most holy and gracious Father, we say thank you. Thank you, Father, for being God in our lives. We thank you, Father, that you brought us back to study your word. And we pray that you would open our hearts and our minds to receive you fresh. In Jesus' name, amen. So our article, we are still on article number 13, a gospel church. And our author writes, we believe that a visible church of Christ is a congregation of baptized believers associated by covenant in the faith and fellowship of the gospel, observing the ordinances of Christ governed by his laws and ex exercising the gifts, rights, and privileges invested in them by his word that it's only scriptural officers are bishops, pastors, and deacons whose qualifications, claims, and duties are defined in the epistles to Timothy and Titus. And so our scripture in total, if you remember, is coming from 1 Corinthians, the first chapter, verses 1 through 13. But today we will only read one verse, and that will be verse 9. And the NIV, and it says, God, who has called you into fellowship with his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, is faithful. And I also like the uh, New King James Version of that verse, which reads, God is faithful by whom you were called into fellowship of his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And so if you notice the two verses, uh, the verses have at least two points. One being that God is faithful and the other that God has called us into fellowship with his son, Jesus Christ. It, it's like in the NIV, God is faithful is like a bookend. It, it's, it's the bookends that encloses his calling of us into fellowship with the son. And then in the New King James Version, God is faithful is on the front end and everything after that is based on his faithfulness. So when we speak of the faithfulness of God, we are speaking of his faithfulness in the past, in the present, and in the future. The past goes back even further uh, than his statement in Genesis when he said, let us make man. The present would be the right now. But in reality, the present is but a moment because after a moment, it becomes the past. And then the future is even further than Jesus coming back. It's eternal. And, and so everything we do, our total existence, depends on God's faithfulness. He was faithful in the past, he's faithful in the present, and he will be faithful in the future. Last time, we looked at what we call fellowship, which is basically us getting together for an activity. We closed that lesson by starting to look at fellowship from the viewpoint of the New Testament church. And if you have not uh, heard that lesson, then make sure you go back to our Mount Sinai uh, NBC of Memphis YouTube channel and look at our le the previous lesson. But the word fellowship, the Greek word for fellowship is koinonia, and it means companionship or partnership and communion with others on the basis of something shared in common. In the New Testament, the first and, and, and most important thing that was shared was a common relationship with Jesus Christ. The word koinonia was never used to refer to any kind of worldly gatherings. It always had a spiritual significance and a spiritual meaning. They never thought of fellowship as just having uh, a common, <clears throat> excuse me, common interests or common activities as in, you know, we get together for family reunions and 
other type reunions. No, they, they didn't think in those terms as fellowship. In the New Testament, believers could only have fellowship and share together because first of all, they had a relationship with Christ. To them, to have fellowship was only possible if first they shared Jesus Christ in common. They considered fellowship to be first and foremost a relationship with Christ, with Jesus Christ. And any activity that followed was just as a result of that relationship. Verse 9 tells us that our calling into fellowship with Jesus Christ is from God the Father. We can't just decide that, that we're going to have fellowship with Jesus. We have to first be called. It, it's like going to the White House to see the president. You can't just show up at, his, at, the, at the door at his quarters and demand to see the president. You must be invited. It's based on a relation, on an invitation. You know, we couldn't go to England and, and decide, well, since I'm here, I'll just run in, uh, run by and spend some time with the queen. It won't happen. And if you try to make it happen, you would be arrested and we will see you on the news. Remember in the book of Esther, when Mordecai wanted Esther to go in to to the king, you know, to save the Jews from uh, being totally destroyed. Her response was that she had not been called by the king in 30 days. Now remember that, remember that at this time, Esther was the queen and yet she couldn't just be bop into the king's presence. It was a life or death thing. Esther, the fourth chapter, verse 11, the New King James Version said, All the king's servants and the people of the king's provinces know that any man or woman who goes into the inner court to the king who has not been called, he has but one law put all to death except the one to whom the king holds out the golden scepter that he may live. So that in, that's in reference to a human king uh, being having a kingly status. When God created man, his goal was that we would be in his image and that we would have fellowship with him. Remember in the Garden of Eden, uh, in the Garden, when, when God, in the cool of the day, he would come and, and have fellowship with Adam. And, and all of that was lost because of sin. Adam didn't just mess up things for him. He messed it up for all of us. But just because mankind was unfaithful to God, God could not be unfaithful to himself. God is not like us. We can intend to do good to do a good thing for somebody but if that person turns on us before we do the good thing then more times than not the good that we would do is taken back and we will no longer do that thing but for god his goal did not change he still desired for us to be in his image and to have fellowship with us god's goodness is not based on us. Malachi 3 and 6, the NIV version says, I, the Lord, do not change. So you, O descendant of Jacob, are not destroyed. In other words, Jacob, the descendants of Jacob, uh, deserve to be destroyed. But because God did not change, his original goal had not changed. So he did not destroy them. To remain true to his goal, God had to, in essence, buy us back from the grips of sin. And to do that, he sent his son, Jesus Christ, into the world to redeem us. Fellowship with God is important 
in the life of a Christian. As sinners, we had nothing in common with the Holy God. But God in his grace sent Christ to have something in common with us. And, and there's no way that we could, we could have anything in common with God because of sin. But God sent his son in, in, in a human body and became a man all so that we could once again have fellowship with God. He, 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 Jesus became like us so that we could have fellowship with God. Think about what that entailed. Jesus, who is one with God, became man and entered the earth. He didn't just zap himself into heaven, from heaven to earth as a strong man. He entered legally as a helpless baby, dependent on a mother and a father for his needs. And even then, that was not the beginning of God's plan to regain fellowship with mankind. Think about the totality of God's plan. God had an elaborate plan that began even before the creation of the world. Think of God's patience of his long suffering. The plan of salvation wasn't something that was done quickly to get it over with. Nor did God take suffering out of the plan. Nor did God just put perfect people in the plan. Only God could have a plan that involved 42 generations, 42 generations. And out of those generations, oftentimes, the plan involved questionable characters of the same family line. When you look through the genealogy of Christ coming to this earth, you will find all sorts of characters, an equal opportunity line of sinners. But that did not deter God. Paul tells us that God is faithful. When I think of all, all of the sort, shortcuts that God could have taken, and yet he didn't. He didn't take any of the shortcuts. I don't know about you, but there are times when I have what I think is a, is a good plan. And, and then I have to deal with people. And before long, my frustration my level of frustration is so high that I will say, forget it. Either that or I will rework the plan so as to have to deal with less people. But not so with God. He stayed true to himself. And in the fullness of time, Christ was born. Even when he was born, he was on the run. Because of man, because of, of, of dealing with people, he, Christ entered the earth's atmosphere the same way every creature since creation enters. He was born of a woman and he suffered the pains of humans and even more so. None of us ha have, have suffered the, to the extent that Christ did. And he did it for us so that we could have fellowship. We could get back into fellowship, have an opportunity to be in fellowship with God. Christ didn't come with a silver spoon in his mouth. Philippians 2 verse 6 through 8 puts it like this. He says, who being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man. He humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. So he didn't just die. He became obedient to death on a cross, which is suffering. Christ crucified 
is only part of the gospel because he got up. He got up from the dead. He is alive. And because he is alive, we can have fellowship with him. In, in no other religion is there such a relationship as that between the believer and Christ. In, in the world of Christianity, the living Christ holds us together and communicates with us. And, and we communicate with him. We are called, first of all, to a fellowship of two people, two persons. It's a two-person thing. One being Christ and the other being the believer. First, it's an individual fellowship between us and Christ. When we accept him as our Savior, he causes us to become like him. Of course, it's a process. It doesn't happen overnight. In fact, it takes a lifetime. And, and, and the, final, the final coming to be like him won't happen until he returns. And because we are in the process of being like him, we desire his company. In fact, we can do nothing without him. If you find yourself not desiring the company of, of, of Christ, you need to go back and recheck yourself, your Christianity status. We are nothing without him. And we are something only because of him. Any fellowship with God must be initiated by him and be preceded by a call that leads to salvation. We must be saved first. To put it simply, fellowship with Christ is the complete surrender of the whole soul to him. Because Christ paid the price for our sins. The way is open for God to forgive us and take us into his family. Second Peter 1 and 4 tells us that when we trust Christ, we become partakers of the divine nature. And then 1 John 1 and 3 says, that which we have seen and heard declare we unto you that ye also may have fellowship with us and truly our fellowship is with the father and with his son jesus christ the word partakers used in second peter is from the same greek word that translates fellowship in first john True fellowship with each other is only possible by first having fellowship with the Father and His Son, Jesus Christ. And we will end this lesson with verse 4 of First John. He says, And these things write we unto you, that your joy may be full. Our joy in the Lord is because as believers, we have been called by God to have fellowship with his son, Jesus Christ. And because God is faithful, our joy is complete. Our joy is full. And with that, that's all I have for today. And I invite you to come back next time and join us as we continue to talk about article number 13 and and the 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 a gospel church <laughs> come back and join us next time until then be blessed love you goodbye